it's so it's so it's such an interesting dynamic because a lot of people live in the here and now. Mm -hmm. So okay, you got Brian Dable now. It's mm -hmm. great. Okay, but if you're, you know, if you're set up, it's like um, you move into a one bedroom, one bath apartment mm -hmm. with with your wife, and then you end up having three kids. Hey, this isn't gonna work. Right. You know, we need to plan for the future here. If you're setting up your team to purely just run the EP system and the players that you have are involved in the EP system and Dabo leaves, Right, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a big, it's a, it's a big problem. It's we a got big a big problem. problem. So, what your argument as you closed, you know, last episode was Hodges and Davis were representations of. Listen, we're going to get guys that are athletes. We're going to get guys that are multifaceted, which they we we made points that they do anyway. They always get guys that are very versatile that can play multiple positions, that yeah. can different things. These. Specifically, though, Davis and Hodges, they're guys that can play, I think, in any offense because, number one, they catch the ball with their hands. Yeah. Number two, they are pretty solid. They're not the best, but they're pretty solid route runners. Mm -hmm. And they they have an animalistic approach when the ball's in the air. Yeah. So you have those three things are universal for a wideout. Mm -hmm. So if Dable does happen to leave, you have that in your back pocket. You have right. two receivers that are coming in. That have that ability, right? They're weapons. Have they done that anywhere else? You mean uh, any other position, position wise? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, Dane Jackson was primarily a man corner, but I, that's college, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, he was a man. But like, you got Edmonds, first round pick. Mm -hmm. He could play anywhere in the linebacking room. Yeah, I agree with that. You got Allen, who is really. I don't think I don't think Allen is helped by the EP system. No, but what I'm saying is some quarterbacks are. Like, let's say, let's switch for argument's sake. You put this is gonna be tough. Could you put Allen in Green Bay yeah. and Lamar Jackson in Green Bay and have the same result? No. Okay. No. Could you put um, Kyler Murray in Green Bay and have the same result? Oh. Same result as Rodgers, like comparatively. Because my, my my thinking is this: if you put Matt Ryan on Baltimore, that that's not the same offense. No, not at all. Only yeah. Jackson could really do those things right. in that offense. Yeah. But I think Allen is is like a universal quarterback. Mm -hmm. So if you need him to be mobile, he is mobile. If you need him to throw ninety five yards, he can do that. So whatever coach comes in or all offensive coordinator can work with the raw materials that are there. Right. Same with Edmonds. I know I'm just, I'm just naming two, but you're talking about Hodges and Davis being two guys that can play in any offense. Are Moss and Singletary those two guys? Yeah, that, I think they're similar. They're very similar backs, which is kind of what gets me a little bit, right? Moss is a better receiving back. He was a little bit better in pass pro than Singletary was. Yeah. So I will give him that. So I think Moss is – is again a, a little bit of an upgrade in that department, but Moss isn't as dirty a back as Singletary. Like Singletary is a dirty back. He like is. he's a dirty back, especially in pass pro. I love him in pass pro. Well, I see. I'm not as much. I don't. I'm not as much. Not as, as much. This I'm not year. as much a fan. I'm not as much a fan. I like him. In I'm just talking about at you know when he gets to the line of scrimmage, he's a dirt. He's a dirty dude. He's gonna be dragged. He's gonna drag <laughs> some people with him, right? And True. I love that. But. Um, Moss and Singletary, I think, fit more of an old school running back mentality. You see a lot of these running backs nowadays, they go, teams are being successful with receiving quick twi twitch backs. And I, I don't think Moss is quick in that respect. He can catch the ball quite well. Mm -hmm. But I think both those guys kind of fit more of a traditional back role. Having both of them, is that advantageous to you? No, I don't think so. I don't think having both of them makes a lot of sense. The Moss pick was curious to me because the skill set was so similar to Singletary's. It's like, well, you really don't like Devin Singletary. No, no, I, right? I, I, like I disagree. I disagree. What do you mean? What do you mean you disagree? You picked up 
it's 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 funny. I thought you would have been the one to see this. You picked up Hyde and Poyer mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. Would you do with their contracts? Oh well, yeah. Okay. You staggered them. Yeah. Would you do with Brown and Beasley? You staggered them. Would you do with Moss and Singletary? You staggered them. Okay. Who was the cheapest? Moss and Singletary because they were drafted. Yeah, they were drafted. Because you're not going to pay top dollar for running backs. No. So you did the same exact thing. Yeah, but you got the same guy. You didn't sign Jordan Poyer or Micah Hyde because their skill sets were so similar. No, but what I'm saying is it's a, it's a different dynamic, though, because you're asking those guys to play two different roles. You're asking Beasley and Brown to play two different roles, so you're mm-hmm. staggering them. Only one running back at a time, usually. Right. So that's why you get the guy with has similar skill sets. Mm-hmm. So it's if one of them goes down, you could, it's you more could, translatable. Plus, you're you're spending the least on that position now. I don't think I don't think Moss and Singletary, if you were to change offensive coordinators, neither of them hurt in an offense no. that they would be going into. No, no. And in fact, they'd probably be used more. They would to be, be honest. because you drafted two guys that are volume runners. If you bring a guy in here that wants to run the ball more, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to be yeah. salivating over that. Well, and I guess that's you know people talk about Gabe Davis. You know, as being this great draft pick, and I, I like Gabe Davis a lot. The the Gabe Davis that showed up on Sundays is a better version of the Gabe Davis that showed up on Saturdays in college. Like he really did a good job of growing as a player in the off season. Mm-hmm. And that's on Davis. That's not on the coaching staff. That's that's on the kid, because the vets came in and were like, "Yo, this kid knows. This kid knows his stuff." <laughs> like Diggs walks in, he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's, I I was going to him." I was going to the rookie to get my questions answered, right? <laughs> so I, that's a, that's high praise. Yeah. But you don't get lucky like that all the time. No, yeah, that's the. Do you think that's the scouting department? I mean, I don't know, because there are there are about high character guys. Not to say that other teams aren't. I'm saying we've seen it. We've seen how Buffalo puts a great onus on yeah. high character guys. Is the reason you drafted Hodges and Davis because you? Or looking for a type of player, because let's be real. I mean, Davis is they're they're different styles of player, but ultimately kind of do fit into a similar mold of we're about to draft the tallest wide receivers on this team. Here you go, <laughs> right? I you know the propensity of getting insurance policies, which I, I'd be I know I'd beat it to death, but I, that's what I've it's seen. not wrong, Omar. Like if you were wrong, I I disagree with you, but I, on this one, no, you're right. Insurance policies. Um, the fact that rookie wide receivers normally need time to adjust, mm-hmm. and you knew you were probably going to be losing Brown and Beasley at some point, because mm-hmm. this was, be- I mean, this was, you did it after already you acquired Diggs, so you're right. playing with house money at this point. Yeah, okay. And you don't know, because John Brown, like you said, didn't even play a full season. Mm-hmm. So if you if, if the, you have Diggs in the building, which you traded with the first pick, you drafted Davis to be a, could he be the number two if mm-hmm. Brown goes down? Well, Let's get ourselves another guy. If I'm not, I'm not saying the Hodges and Davis are the same player, right? I'm saying the way that they go about the position, as far as how they catch the ball mm-hmm. and how they, you know, their responsibilities speed. are yeah, similar. They're very yeah. similar. So I think they were just doubling down at that point. So the one bonus point here that Buffalo has. And I thought it was brilliant when they did it with signing Kenny Stills. And a lot of Bills fans are going to be like, well, we signed Stills and we never played him. Well, you didn't have to, right? Mm-hmm. Although it would have been nice to see Kenny Stills in there instead of Gabe Davis because Davis was clearly injured for both playoff games. He was. Clearly injured. He was. Um, but you got Kenny Stills in the building. We talked about this on other episodes. It's like red shirt in a guy. It is. Now you're – if Kenny Stills is going to be a free agent, which he is, his contract is is expired now, you're asking him to walk away from Buffalo and sign somewhere else. Look at the opportunity. If you cut Brown, yeah, you still need to replace Beasley at some point, right? After next year. After next year, you got to replace Beasley. I don't think they have that skill set. You're losing Roberts. You're losing McKenzie, who are your only two that were really close. Yes, you signed Tanner Gentry. No, that doesn't matter, right? But can you survive the season with your top wide receivers being Diggs, Beasley, Davis, and Stills. Those are your four primary wide this season for this upcoming yes. season. Does does Diggs, Beasley, Davis, and Stills equal Diggs, Brown, and Beasley? It's a totally different dynamic in the offense. It is a total different dynamic, but you got to remember where we started this conversation. 
we started it by talking about two wide receivers that have a unique skill, that have a skill set that would be universal for a bunch of offenses. Mm-hmm. After this season, you know how we're talking about um, we're talking about John Brown yep. being a cap casualty this year. Yeah, like next yeah. season mm-hmm. is Cole Beasley's fate tied to Brian Dable because you said of the unique skill set. Now, if a guy comes in that runs the EP system, obviously you're going to want to have Beasley, right? But six, I think he's like six million if you cut him mm-hmm. that you save. If Brian Dable is not your offensive coordinator next year, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the reason why you get Hodges and Davis? Because you know the time is click the, the time is running out on Dable. He's not yeah. going to be here forever. Right. If he leaves, then now both Brown and Beasley go at the same time. Right. If if Brown is selling his team. Yeah. Brown and Beasley both go at the same time. You need two guys to come in at the same time. Mm-hmm. If you got and and Hodges and. Davis are more universally acceptable to a variety of systems. And then what yeah, you're going to have is, in 2022, a guy that, two guys that have been in the building for three years mm-hmm. and, and Diggs. But how far away from the EP system do you get if your four wide receiver set is Diggs, Beasley, Davis, and Stills? How far away from the EP system are you really getting I, at that point? You know point? what? The thing is with the EP system is it's, it's timing routes, t- read routes, a lot of things underneath, which is Beasley's forte. If you go into a West Coast system, it is a quick timing system as well. However, um, a lot of them are just more. There's a lot more vertical routes here. Look at the look at the offense. Look at Kansas City's offense. Look at Buffalo's offense. Mm-hmm. That's West Coast. That's EP. What does that tell you? I mean, could Beasley play in Kansas City? Probably, but he's more valuable in the EP than he is in the West Coast. Is he worth six million in a in an EP? Yes. Is he worth six million in West Coast? Probably not. We can talk about it. You Pro- know what I mean? Probably not. No, but that there's your difference though. But Kansas City's been investing first round picks to try and you know because they know that they were spending so much money on their wide receivers. Yeah. They're like, listen, we paying Watkins an absolute ass ton of money. We got to replace him. Let's just keep drafting wide receivers in the first round because Pringle. while while Watkins hasn't contributed I'm exactly. Sorry, well, no, but they keep drafting wide yeah. receivers. While Watkins wasn't critical to the offense, the skill set's what they needed. It wasn't the player. Yeah, it's Pringle, it was, it Pringle was, and Hardman are the two guys that they drafted. Right. In and they're dangerous. To, they are. They're dangerous players. Okay. So I think we've landed on if you keep Brown and you lose Dable, you risk having Brown and Beasley both be gone at the same time. Gone at the same time. If you lose Brown now, you get the opportunity to to revamp that position a little bit more, right? And then possibly you're just losing Beasley if Dayball leaves. Yes. Because Beasley, as valuable as he is to this offense, I mean, a, a, an NFL offense around the league now, a player like Beasley, at his age, mm-hmm. you know, you, you got to think about how valuable that really is to you. Broken leg, too. Put the team on my back. Broken leg. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I love it. And there, and here I'm bitching about Gabe Davis playing with you know a with a hurt groin and Beasley's out there on a broken leg. Well, listen, there's not enough tape in the world that could fix that. You see him taping him, taping him up. He's like, yeah, it feels good on the sideline. They're taping him up. He's like, yeah, it feels good. No, it doesn't. Don't lie. Don't lie. <laughs>